bit of both actually I think um I'm always quite vocal about wishing we'd had more opportunities when we were younger but I think the shoe on the other foot now the the next generation are getting these incredible opportunities and it's going to improve women's cricket so much so quickly um so yeah you can't be too disgruntled I think Catherine Brunt's probably the most disgruntled of the squad <laughs> how do you see it Kate do you see it as about time or do you see it as like wow I can't believe what's going on here we're in the studio here Literally, we've got the cricket from South Africa and just over there, we've got the under-19 women playing against India. That would be unheard of a decade or so ago. Do you see it as about time or do you think, right, this is just brilliant the way the game's going? It, it's hard to not feel like that. I think having been in the system now for, gosh, 24, 25 years, that's how long I've been playing cricket. You, As a cricketer, you want to do what the men are doing and you want to have you know, the, the chance to play in on the biggest stage. And I think what we are seeing with women's cricket is how fast it's moving and it's quite hard to keep up with that pace. You almost have to be three steps ahead of the game because in two years' time, it's going to look so drastically different. Um, but you you just want everyone to have the chance. I think in, in, any, in any sport that you play or your kids play or whatever it might be, you just want everyone to get the opportunities that everyone, you know, it, it shouldn't be... The, because of sex that you get better opportunities it should just be you love a sport and you get to play it as much as possible and and Kay you've been keeping an eye on the tournament how, how what have you thought of the standard I mean you know you're a bit long in the tooth now 31 so <laughs> <laughs> it's a long time ago since you were 19 but can you can you compare what you know the standard now compared to when you were 19 and I and I saw that Rwanda won a couple of games for example so the the growth of the game globally is a fantastic thing. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm going to get this in there because I can. But I think Bangladesh beat Australia as well. So um, that's <laughs> for us to see. That's great because you don't want the powerhouses of cricket, your Indias, your Englands, your Australias to just keep moving forward. You want everyone to, to move with you. And I think we've seen in the senior side of women's cricket that that's kind of what's happening. Um, obviously, there's these global tournaments that are coming around now. All the franchises are starting to pop up for the women, um, which is going to increase the standard. But, yeah, when I was 19, it was almost like you, there wasn't enough girls playing cricket to even make an 11. And that's why a lot of our generation played men's cricket growing up, because you just didn't have um, the numbers to be able to have women's teams. So um, it, it's just brilliant to see. And um, it's great for our girls that, you know, Scripps has led the, the, the group so well, I think, um, I wouldn't even know how to captain a team when I was 19, let alone in a World Cup. Um, and, and being on Sky as well, you know, the, the girls are playing on Sky Mix now and it's great for people to be able to watch it. So it's, it's, it's just that exposure that I think we didn't get when we were that age. It's a double-edged sword, though, isn't it? Because, as you know, either when you commentate or when you're playing and you're a woman, you go onto social media and immediately there... That there, there is the criticism, whatever happens. So these young women, as they are, 18, 19 years of age, with that exposure now will come criticism. How much do you have to just keep an eye on these young women growing up uh, and almost warn them what lies ahead while you're still trying to prove this point? Yeah, how dare women have opinions on cricket? It's, it's dangerous, <laughs> isn't it? Um, <laughs> but, yeah, uh, obviously, I think... What is good is the fact that the 100, especially in the UK, is starting to prep these girls for, for these moments. I think, you know, the likes of Scribs playing, I remember that crunch match that they played at Lords. Um, I remember the originals really needed the spirit to win and, and Scribs was batting and, and took them to the finish. Um, so she actually came on our podcast this week and she spoke about how the 100 and the regional cricket now is is setting her up for these moments, um, which is is brilliant. But I think... What we are trying to do is change that landscape of of putting women in the media in sport and, you know, those opinions now don't seem as um, disgraceful or whatever it might be. So I think it, it's just, it is just brilliant. I do wish that we'd had these opportunities when, when we were their age and, and they've even got a great crowd in today. There's a load of school kids that have come and filled the stand over there. So there's noise, um, there's that added pressure. Like I say, they're on TV. Um, They've got Heather Knight watching them. That's no pressure at all. So, um, yeah, it's just great. Kate, the landscape has changed dramatically in the last month or so with the, with the Women's Premier League and the amounts of money being spent on that, both from television rights and 
from the franchise who've been buying it. I read an interview in The Guardian, I think, with Heather just two or three days ago where she kind of sounded a slight cautionary note as well, on the one hand saying what an, a fantastic opportunity and change that is, but given the disparity in pay and talent between some countries and other countries, whether there's a danger that people will move away from international cricket too quickly, which is something we've seen in the men's game particularly. Um, I mean, it's obviously good news, but is there a kind of cautionary note to be struck as well? Yeah, I completely agree, actually. I think Heather hit the nail on the head because we're at the stage that the, can the men are kind of moving into now with, the with all these franchise leagues popping up everywhere. It seems like there's something on every week. And we're, we're getting to that stage, obviously not as drastic at the moment, but our governing bodies, um, obviously not Australia, England and India, um, but some teams are not caught up enough to be able to cope with that demand, I don't think. So we're seeing a few of the South African girls, Lizelle Lee has retired from international cricket and she's going to go and play franchise cricket. Um, and I think we'll start seeing, uh, DeAndre Dotton from the West Indies as well, I think we're going to start seeing a lot more of that, which is... It feels dangerous for international cricket because we don't want to lose. We don't. I guess you don't want to lose that that side of the women's game. Um, that's kind of what we've grown up on. It's how we've been professional in the UK. So it. it I, yeah, I feel like Heather. Like I said, I think she hit the nail on the head because it's. It feels like we're in this real. Dangerous is the wrong word, but it just feels like we're in a real cautious place where if we get it wrong, then it you know it could mean that a lot of players leave international cricket because they could earn more money from franchises than their central contracts allow them to, um, which obviously you don't really want to see happening. I'm going to move this on now, Kate, if you don't mind, because you're not out there to be our special correspondent on women's cricket. You're actually <laughs> out there to play in the World T20 as part of Heather Knight squad. How pleased, dare I say surprised, were you to find yourself in that squad? Yeah, I was very surprised. Um, I actually was I was going to be out there with you guys. So um, You were supposed to be with me, so you've actually and, drawn and the long straw now. <laughs> yeah, I asked, Louis to, I asked Louis to do me a favour and make sure I wasn't with you. Um, but no, it's it's obviously, like we've alluded to, I'm 31 now. You don't, you're not going to get these opportunities um, for too much longer. You don't know how long your career lasts. So um, my T20 career has been... A strange one actually I've been in and out and up and down I've you know done the hokey pokey with the T20 squad so um I think the fact that Louis come in he must have seen something in me in the West Indies in that tour his first tour with us um and he's he's not taken a chance I hope it's not that drastic but yeah it's, it's just again great to think that you might get the chance of, of lifting the trophy with the squad again. I notice you're in India's group Kate how much of a grudge match is that going to be after what happened at Lord's? <laughs> oh, I can't remember what happened. Is it? Is that a big deal? <laughs> no, um, yeah, that, you know what? We're seeing a lot of that, the, the man cad in, a, in the under 19s as well. Um, so it's obviously a huge hot topic at the minute in cricket. But um, yeah, I, uh, we, we've got to remember that we beat them in the, in the T20 series just before that one day series happened. Um, but it's, I think there's always going to be a bit of a, a grudge match there now with India, isn't there? <laughs> We're just looking at the groups now. Um, uh, the challenge for all the sides, obviously, is keeping up with Australia. You won eight on the bounce in the West Indies in the two formats, T20 and 50 over cricket. How difficult a challenge is that when you're going around the world, beating a lot of sides, and then you come up against this machine? I mean, it is Australia daylight, the rest at the moment in women's cricket. How difficult is it? And what do you have to do to make sure that you're not just sort of coasting along, beating the other sides, to keep an eye on the end goal, which is beating that Australian machine. Yeah, I think that's something that Louis is is trying to instill quite quickly in us, is the mindset that we play with. And it almost then becomes, it doesn't matter which opposition you're playing against, if you're playing your cricket, um, which is very similar. He's come in and, and seen what, well, he's been with the men's squads for the last couple of years and seen what they've done and he sees no reason why we can't recreate that in the women's in the women's game. So I think if we can just keep playing that real positive brand of cricket where you forgive them for making positive mistakes, you know, if, if you go into your shell and, and play safe, that's when Louis will shout at you. Um, so that, I think that's what we're trying to create now, playing well when we're playing against the West Indies and playing our warm-up games at the moment. 
um, yeah, we're just trying to instill that mindset in, in all the girls um, to make sure that when we do come up against Australia, India's, whoever that might be, that we're ready to take them on and, and give them the best run that we possibly can. Right, finally, Kate, what is your movements from here on in? What are the team doing in terms of preparation up to game one? Uh, so we're in Pretoria at the moment. Uh, well, obviously not today. We've travelled to Potchestrum to watch the girls today. Um, we've got a couple of warm-up games against the West Indies and then we move into like the ICC takeover part of the tournament um, where we'll play the official warm-up games. So we've got five warm-up games in total, which feels quite a lot. Um, and then our first game is the 11th of February. Um, we're playing against the West Indies and I could tell you where we are, but I've not looked at the schedule that far, so <laughs> not sure where we're playing. Well, good luck and thank you very much for joining us. I'll see you out there in due course.